6th of 2020. I got a little bit behind yesterday, but today I, uh, I have a few things that I hope I can get done. We shall see. We will see how it goes. Um, I did get some projects done yesterday that I've been needing to complete. Match, I think it is. Close enough for me. My plan for the day is to work on a project that I sort of dreamed up about, you know, using these up. And I'm hoping that it works. We'll see. And then I have some baking I want to do. And after I do that, if there's time, I'm going to work on my jacket. I mentioned, well, I think I mentioned it in a video yesterday, but then I think that part got cut in the editing process. So my plan for that jacket that's way too big is to use an item of clothing that I currently own uh, as sort of a, I don't know, sort of a pattern to just see what happens. So the jacket, let's just clarify that real quick. The jacket is far too big for me. So my plan is to use a shirt because it was the jacket was based off of a shirt pattern, so to speak. And um, I have several long sleeve shirts that I can kind of use as a pattern to pin or, or chalk draw on the fabric of the jacket that's too big. And I can determine where I need to fix some of the um, issues. The um, arm size on the jacket is ridiculously big. <laughs> it just hangs way, way, way down below under my arm where it's it should, level. which then drags you know, the shoulders are too low. It's just, it's massive. I don't think it'll ever be a perfect fit, but it'll be, it'll be good enough to wear as a jacket around here. And it's not like I'm working. I don't go out of the house to a job where I would wear that. I wouldn't wear it, you know, out to a restaurant, but I would certainly wear it if I had to go grocery shopping or if we were sitting out on the deck or whatever. Um, it's warm, it's comfortable, it's made, and after I get it sort of fitted, I do need to make the belt, and I have the fabric for that. So that's on the agenda for this afternoon. Um, this morning I had planned to do a few more active things. Um, I had to cook something um, really early this morning. And then I have a, a recipe that I want to try. I kind of dreamed it up and I was thinking it would work really well. So the recipe is basically for sweet potato apple muffins. And if it turns out like I think it will, I will share the recipe with you guys. If you're interested, you can try along if you like sweet potatoes and apples and cinnamon and all those things that taste like fall. So that will be a baking thing. But what happened is I, I hit my, you know how when you're walking and you hit a piece of furniture with your foot? Oh my gosh, I was getting the dog's food ready this morning and I just plowed into a chair, a heavy, heavy Havana wooden chair in my kitchen. And uh Talk about eye water. Now my foot hurts. It's like hours later and my foot is just killing me. So I don't know how long, you know, like if I can stand long enough to do a whole lot of, a whole lot of. 
Okay, so I decided that rather than have these pieces of fabric sitting around bothering me, um, I purchased this because I don't know anything about quilting and I had found this American Tradition, McCall's American Tradition pattern and I thought, oh, a charm pack, but actually um, it's a strip set that I need or I have to, you know, purchase fabric and make my own. So I'm just going to sew these little charm packs up. I have two sets of 40 that I purchased, Autumn Spice and Autumn Haze. This is Autumn Spice, this woven pack. These are obvious woven fabrics that I just pressed. I used um, non-sponsored, no affiliation. I just purchased to try Mary Ellen's Best Press Spray Starch, and I love it. But I tried it on this, and of course woven fabric always acts differently you know, than a, a cotton or quilting cotton when you when you spray it up with, with anything. When it gets wet, it tends to curl. That's exactly what this did. So I've been standing over there trying to get these pressed for the longest time because the little edges were just curling up like a woven will, will do. Now it looks and feels pretty good. So my plan is to stitch this up and then I might use it you know, get some quilt backing and then use it um, on my table because I love the colors and I think it would be a real pretty, maybe not a runner, but like a, uh, something for the middle of the table. So I'm going to try that. We're going to see what happens. I'm going to put it together and then I may hand quilt because none of these are going to match. In fact, the machine that cut this kind of missed on a few. Here's an example right here. So, you know, there's no way you can get these to match up, especially since they're all different sizes. So I'm not even going to worry about it, but I think it would be a cute hand project with long quilting stitches and double thread. So we're going to see how that works out. I'm also using a Guterman. I, it's 100% polyester thread, and I, I can only say that the color is sort of a, I don't know what you'd call it, forest teal. It, it has a teal tinge to it, but of course it's very dark. So it's like a really dark teal. And that's where I'm gonna go with this project. So I'm gonna do a few of these and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. And we'll just go from there. I thought I better say, the only rules that I'm having that I'm giving myself on this is that I can't stitch two of the same together. Okay, so these have all been stitched up in pairs, which I will now separate. I have my thread catcher and my little tiny crumb catcher over here, just in case. Now I have these little twosomes stitched together that I believe I will go press. I might clean them up a little bit. Like I said, they're, they're just covered up in string. So I'm not sure if I plan to limit myself uh, to just this. I do have more of these as well as the Autumn. This is Autumn Spice and the print, the cotton print is Autumn Haze. Right, okay. So I have almost all of that. I have used a few of these for a few other projects 
but I mean, not even, I don't even think five. And now they're pressed. <laughs> so, so I pressed all of the seam allowances in one direction and I'm just going to alter, you know, turn these over so that I can lock them like this. So one is going one way and one is going the other way. I have literally no idea what this is going to look like in the end. I'm not attempting to have much control over which pieces I choose. So next, in our little process, we will open these up. I do want to remove any threads that are coming through the seams. remember not to use steam this time. So now I'm trying to decide, do I want width or do I want length? And I think at this point, I'm going to want width. So we're going to sew straight down the middle here. All right, I'm going to pin this. All right, so it's been a minute. So here's my thought. I have this, which I think is really pretty. I just need to decide, do I want to run in this direction? I kind of think I do. I think I'm going to go uh, horizontally rather than vertically on this project. Okay, and then I have some warm and natural that I will put between. And I will cut it just a little bit beyond the, the salvage. It doesn't, I don't think I would like that on that edge. So I'm going to give it just a little bit like so. All right. I'll be right back. I have the ticking on the back some 505 temporary adhesive then I have a layer of warm and natural and the little woven patchwork piece that we did earlier and I realize these are not um, 
the type of pens that quilters typically use. They may have at one time before um, better alternatives came along. So I don't, you know, I don't have, you know, like a king size or even a twin. I don't have a quilt sized piece here to work on. So that's really not going to be a problem. I think I'll kind of go every other block and just put some pins to kind of hold everything together. I don't really want to rely too heavily on the 505. I don't know that it would, you know, keep things together while I'm working on it. So that's why I'm just going to kind of randomly pin just to make sure that it doesn't fall apart in the process. And I, uh, there's probably a way that quilters would do this that I'm not doing. I don't know, really, except that I'm just, you know, keeping it pinned together. Alright, so I have two hoops. Well, I think we know that this is the one that we're going to be using. I might have to move this pin right here. Sorry about that. It will be in the way, so I'm going to just take it off and... have it in the hoop. And already I can see that pinning first was a good idea because otherwise it would have pulled things really really out of shape so that was a great idea and then I can just do whatever embroidery it is that I want to do here and then move the hoop toward the outer edges as I get there because this is pretty centrally located right here now I need to decide what um, what color of thread and what type of thread This is 100% cotton. This is polyester. It's the basically it's the same except that it's kind of a hmm. It's a heavier weight. I think I'm going to go with polyester. Sorry guys, I mean, you know, you have to think about these things sometimes. So, alright, I'm going to go with polyester. I'm using a size 8 sharp. Um, Alright, so I'm going to just start all over again. I do have a knot in the back and I'll see if I can fix it where you can hear this. There we go. It did not pull all the way through. It had two little tails. I cut those off. I really would like the stitches to be visible. So I'm going to have to make sure There we go. And this is just what I want on my project. And if it isn't something that you're interested in, you know, if you want your stitches to only be visible on the back, then um, that is possible by taking smaller stitches um, if you're using a less busy fabric on the back of your project. But I kind of want the, the rustic look of bigger stitches on the front of mine. Now I'm having a hard time controlling. These are not at all the way I want them to look. 
but the problem is me trying to keep this in frame. So you can kind of see this is about the length of the stitches, but they are completely wonky and I will remove them so that I can actually get them straight when it's just me sitting here with my project. And then on the back, you know, you'll be able to see the quilting lines from this work. My plan for tomorrow is to have pieces 13 and 14 and the pocket cut out for my sister's fleece leaf print fabric pants so that we can stitch those up. I'm on the fence about using my serger to do this project. I might do it. I really might pull the serger out. It's hard to say. I'm Sometimes I just think I'm not going to do something and then all of a sudden the, before I know it I'm doing it. So <laughs> we will see how that turns out. I can replicate that blanket stitch or that surged stitch on my sewing machine but I cannot have that cut perfectly cut surged edge on my sewing machine so there is that there is that I might actually pull that serger out it's been a long time since I used it I hope it is still threaded and I hope the thread hasn't degraded. And yes, that's how long it has been. The other thing I'm going to do is continue to work on the jacket. I've already removed the sleeve. So I may just go ahead and do the trimming and the cutting. And then just kind of give you an overview of what I did and how I did it. When I get to the part of where I'll be putting the sleeve back in because at this point it's just simply removing stitches and I don't feel like that's something that you guys would want to see. I could be absolutely wrong but I don't think so. <laughs> so unstitching is not something fun to watch. So when I get all of that part done and then we'll go back and look at how to reattach the sleeve and change the arm side and the sleeve bulk just all of it and I think at this point aside from this needle project the jacket and the pants I'm kind of there are so many things that I want to do I'm just trying not to let it all snowball and get ahead of me I hope that everybody has a wonderful Tuesday evening and tomorrow we're going to work on the pants. I will update you on the jacket. I'm going to do a little bit of needlework. And I would love to have you join me and my dandelions. Thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.